Earlier this year, I had the privilege of working with Monroe Live to shoot a video on a new device for electric vehicles, the emergency plug. Now, in that video, we did a high-level overview of the functionality testing out the device. Stick around in this video to learn more about how the device functions and the operational considerations while using this device. Now, before we get started on talking about the emergency plug, let's talk about some history on how it made its way to the US. Now, the emergency plug has been around for a couple of years now, but primarily sold in Europe. Uh, it was invented by a European company, and the reason why it made it to the US was this incident right here. You can see this incident of a New York firefighter working his way into an electric vehicle, a hybrid vehicle, in order to disable that vehicle. Unfortunately, he wasn't really in a great position here. And you can see why as this scene unfolds, as this car jumps forward, injuring the firefighter. Not a great situation, very unfortunate, and it's very lucky that this firefighter wasn't killed in the line of duty in this type of incident. So now let's look at this product in more detail. So inside the box, on the top cover, you start off by seeing a set of instructions that explains the basic functions of the emergency plug. Inside the box is an instruction pamphlet. We've got the emergency plug itself. We've also got extra batteries, two plastic pry bars, and then we have an adapter. And I'll get into the functionality of each one of these things as we move forward. The first thing I take note of is when I grab the emergency plug out, it's actually quite large and it's double-ended. You've got two different charging standards on each end. The third adapter in here, this is the North American charging standard or the Tesla plug. Uh, so this will be plugged into any Teslas that you may run into, but also vehicles manufactured moving forward are starting to adopt this standard. Now we start off by turning on the emergency plug. We push this button right here. You're gonna see a bunch of lights flashing. As those lights flash, it's going through its self-check. Ideally, it's gonna start flashing green. That means it's ready to use. Now, if there's a case where it's flashing red, that means it has low batteries. You're gonna to have to swap out the batteries and then start it over again. Now, if it's solid red, that means there's an issue with the device and it needs to be sent out for repair. Now the device is on, it's flashing green, you're ready to use it. Well, what's the next step? You're gonna to have to find the charging port on the vehicle. Certain vehicles, they actually have electromechanical charging ports where there's a door that has to be opened. The door is typically opened by something on the inside of the vehicle. Depending on the state of that vehicle, we're not gonna waste our time with that. That's why the kit gives us plastic tools, whatever tool you might have, maybe it's a halogen bar, to open up that charging port access cover and make access to the charging port. There are a number of vehicles out there where the charging port is manual and it's not a big deal just to open that up with your hands. Once you've opened the door for the charging port, now you can plug the device in. If it's blue, it's good for you. Once the light on the emergency plug has turned solid blue, that means the emergency plug has communicated with the vehicle, it has put that vehicle in park and disabled it for the time being. That stops motion on the vehicle. Now there's a lot of people out there that think it's just a simple resistor or you know, you're shorting out some pins in the charging port and that's not correct. Inside of this emergency plug, there's actually a little computer in there. It's doing a handshake with the vehicle. It's communicating with the vehicle. It's letting the vehicle know, hey, you're receiving a charge. The vehicle, of course, doesn't see the power coming in. The vehicle is going to fault out. But during that time, it's going to place itself in park and turn itself off. Now, I know there's some concern that, hey, if we unplug that or if it accidentally gets disconnected, is the vehicle gonna put itself back in drive? Is it gonna turn itself back on and be able to take off down the roadway? From my testing so far and from my communications with the inventor of this plug, that is not possible. These vehicles, once they shut themselves down, once they place themselves in park, do not re-energize themselves. They do not put themselves back in drive when you remove that plug. Now note, this is just a first step in the operation. This is just to stop motion on the vehicle. This does not disable a high voltage. You still have to refer to the emergency response guide for these vehicles, and depending on the situation, depending on the severity of the crash, maybe, if you're going into an extrication, then you have to move to the next steps where you're finding the cut loop, cutting that cut loop so you can actually disable the high voltage on that vehicle. Now, a couple other conditions to be aware of. You plug this emergency plug into the vehicle, it continues to blink green, or it starts flashing yellow. That means the vehicle isn't communicating with 
the emergency plug. That means motion could be possible. Something's likely damaged in that vehicle. It could be a situation where an airbag deployed, you had the pyro fuses inside the battery, already disable the battery system. There's a number of factors there, but you still have to refer to the ERG and start moving to your next disabling steps in that ERG. The cut loop, the high voltage disconnect, whatever that ERG might say. Now, something else to be aware of, you plug this plug in, it's your first step. It turns blue, it's good for you. There's no more motion on this vehicle allowed. You start moving on to the next steps. You're going to disable the vehicle. You're cutting the cut loop. As soon as you cut that cut loop, the emergency plug is going to lose communication with the vehicle. It's going to start blinking red. Just be aware that this is something that can happen and it's not something to necessarily be alarmed at. Now, I just wanna state this part again. This is just a first step in the operation. It's designed to stop motion. Depending on the situation, you know, maybe you've got a medical situation you're dealing with, maybe it's a very minor accident. You really don't care if the high voltage is disabled on this vehicle. You just need to safely gain access to your patient. Now a full blown extrication where you've got a vehicle that may have gone into a wall or it's up on its side, or maybe like the New York incident, it's up on another vehicle. You wanna stop that motion before going into your other disabling steps. Because think about this. A lot of these cut loops are in the front of the vehicle. You have to access the hood. You have to pull trim pieces out. You wanna ensure those vehicles aren't going to move prior to going after these cut loops. So if you've got a situation where you have to access the cut loop, the safest thing you can do is plug this into the vehicle, get the blue light hopefully, that way you know the vehicle is not going to move while you go into those next steps in isolating the high voltage. I've had a few questions on, well, will this work for a vehicle fire? Honestly, it could, but I wouldn't be plugging this $1,000 plug into a flaming vehicle. Chief probably isn't going to appreciate that. Now, overall, I've tested this on a Rivian, a Chevy, a Ford, a Tesla, multiple electric vehicles. It works extremely well. It'll even take your vehicles like the Ford Lightning. It'll take that shifter and automatically move it all the way up to park. It turns the vehicle off. If you remove this plug after it's been in use, the vehicles don't restart. In fact, sometimes you have to power cycle that vehicle twice in order to get it to start again. So there's a lot of safety mechanisms within the vehicle themselves the vehicles don't want to allow motion when they think they're charging. Now, if you have any questions or there's something you'd like me to go in a little bit more detail about, feel free to leave a comment below.